My search is finally over and no, this is not an exaggeration. In a recent video I was comparing SolidJS with React and I was explaining that one of the main reasons it's hard for me to adapt new libraries in production is the lack of tooling. And for me, a complete flexible component library is at the top of the tooling list. We all are familiar with Material UI and its support for established frameworks such as Angular or Vue. My personal favorite, Ant Design, provides UI tooling for React and it was one of the main reasons I was usually leaning towards React when starting a new project. Of course, there are various other component libraries options out there, but not all of them feel as complete and as powerful as Material or Ant. Or, at least, that's what I thought. Enter Daisy UI, a component library built on top of, wait for it, Tailwind CSS. Let's spend the next few minutes looking at the main features and the dev experience Daisy UI enables for you. By the end of the video, we'll build a couple of small app widgets and I promise you'll be impressed with what you'll see. We'll get things started by setting up a basic SolidJS project, which will allow us to easily create some UI components. These days, I'm using Vite whenever possible, and you can check the video linked into the top right corner if you want to find out why. Next, we'll install Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, Daisy UI, and we are ready to go. This is the resulting project structure. I know, there are so many files in here. Front end projects can get intimidating these days, but don't worry, once you get the gist of it, it'll all make sense. Daisy UI is a plugin for Tailwind CSS, so during this video, we'll make some small changes in the Tailwind config file. For now, I'm just registering the Daisy UI plugin, and then I'm jumping into the app section to create my actual templates and content. We'll discuss all the benefits of Daisy UI in just a second, but first, let's take a quick detour and see what's the deal with Tailwind CSS. Well, in short, Tailwind is an extremely popular, utility-first CSS framework designed to alleviate some of the pain points of writing plain CSS rules. CSS is not the hardest thing to write, but styling code bases have this tendency to grow in size and complexity as time goes by. In the long run, maintainability becomes a real issue, and this is the main problem Tailwind is trying to fix. It does this by following atomic CSS principles and, honestly, some other rather opinionated ideas. If you have a lot of experience with styling apps via plain CSS or a preprocessor such as SCSS, the utility classes approach might look like a deal breaker, especially since the HTML templates end up looking horrific sometimes. This is a known disadvantage of Tailwind, and there are options and IDE extensions you can use to hide away long lists of utility classes. By the way, I know that the community is pretty divided on the Tailwind topic, so please let me know in the comments if you got the chance to use Tailwind in production and if it is worth it or not. On the other hand, these utility classes are really powerful and they help with the speed of development. So here is where Daisy UI jumps in. It manages to efficiently adapt Tailwind's features and benefits while hiding its problems. So, if styling a button in Tailwind would end up looking like this, here is the same button styled with Daisy UI. Pretty nice, right? I know, if you'll compare Daisy with any other UI library, you'll say that the dev experience is pretty much the same and that there is no reason to be that excited about it. Hear me out though. There are at least two big reasons to be excited about Daisy UI. Two reasons, of course, not taking into account the rich component library we'll get to in a second. First of all, Daisy UI is built on top of Tailwind CSS, so you'll still be able to use all Tailwind's utility classes in your project. As a result, you'll get both the convenience of a component library and the flexibility of atomic CSS all in one. Second of all, Daisy UI is framework agnostic. This means you don't have to look for a solid or svelte port, for instance. It works directly with plain HTML and with any type of framework. Check out a list of example repositories. They cover Angular, React, Astro, Quick, and even more exotic options like Elm. So this means that from now on, you can use the same Tailwind-powered UI system regardless of the framework your project is written in. Okay, so for the past couple of minutes, you've seen me building an app with a drawer effect and a side menu. In here, I defined a hero section with a couple of form controls and a collection of statistics. Note that I didn't write any CSS to achieve all this, 
and I'm also getting things such as theming or responsiveness out of the box. Anyhow, there is no reason to go through all the components Daisy UI is offering. Believe me, there are a lot of them. Just know that it covers all the usuals you would expect from a component library. Their documentation is well written and you'll be able to jump in and find whatever you need in no time. For the rest of this video, I want to discuss a bit more the idea of customization and configuration. Most DAISY components have a lot of variants which will allow you to build pretty much whatever you'll need. Remember that all these DAISY classes can be always combined with Tailwind CSS classes. Going back to the Tailwind config file, here are some of the default behaviors you can modify in your project. For example, you can allow the components to be styled or just use the basic skeleton. This is useful if you want to work on the UI details on your own. Another useful configuration is setting up a prefix for all DAISY classes. This comes in handy when you are adding DAISY UI into an existing project and you want to make sure there are no conflicts between your old classes and the ones added in by the library. What I find really useful is the collection of themes provided by DAISY UI. If you are not happy with the provided selection, you can define your custom theme or even randomly generate a palette of colors in the theme generator section. Then, simply register your custom theme in the Tailwind config file. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.